Well, thanks very much for having me today, Sarah. Uh, my name is Mark Stevens. I have a kind of a pretty diverse background. I actually come out of internet security and business process automation, really, uh, more than education, although at one point in the remote past I was actually uh, a lecturer at, in TAFE, as it was then known. Um, anyhow, uh, basically, Scrydata was a spin-out from Curtin University. We actually won a prize for innovation back in 2010. And uh, at the time I met the guys who actually developed it here at Curtin, I was actually running a business process automation company. And what really struck me as very interesting about their technology was is that they were actually able to um, analyse data without having to have an initial hypothesis. So it's actually a discovery system rather than uh, I wonder if this is related to that kind of an approach. And uh, that, as far as I can determine, having kind of researched what's out there in the marketplace, is actually really quite unique. So um, most of the analytics tools, um, I guess in education as well as in business in general, um, really rely on you having an idea. Like, for instance, um, I was chatting to the, one of the data analytics heads from um, eBay, and he was saying that they had actually discovered that in America the forecast of snow actually influences people's purchases of certain things. Not whether it snows or not, the forecast influences it. And so they use that information to uh, help their, uh, you know, their stores to actually stock the right stuff at the right time. Um, so that, but what actually happened there was they actually came up with that as a hypothesis and said, I wonder if the weather is related to DART, and then followed that through. Um, and so what we do really is, is quite different. We actually approach the... The, uh, the problem from looking at the data and then finding out what patterns are in the data and then seeing what that pattern, what those patterns tell us. And so it actually has application in a number of different areas. Data quality and integrity, which I think really is key to any uh, good analytics system, because if your data isn't clean to begin with, then you aren't going to get very good results, whether you're predicting or whatever. Um, process analytics, uh, this is another area that is, uh, was very well developed when I first met the guys in the sense of looking, they were looking at business processes, but we could just as easily use this same technology to look at what's happening over, say, the course of a student executing a unit or actually over the course of a student executing a whole diploma or a degree and figure out what events during that process affect the outcome. Deviation analysis and fraud detection, I, won't, I really won't touch on that today, uh, but it is another area that we do. And predictive analytics, so in other words, um, looking at the information we glean in the other areas and then being able to say, okay, what does this really tell us about what's going to happen? And I think that has a direct application in, uh, in teaching and learning as well. Uh, if we understand the process, if we understand the touch points, being able to predict whether a student may pass or fail a unit and on their behaviours so far. So uh, with the data technology, um, I won't bore you with the, with the nitty-gritty details, but I guess the, the most important part of our data cleansing technology versus most of the products that are out there is that we really are a closed-loop system, meaning that we find the inconsistencies um, in the data, but more importantly, we actually go back and figure out what was the process that caused those inconsistencies in the first place. And there's a number of different things that that might prove to be. It could be that somebody has actually overridden the system and put in some bad data. It might be that there aren't sufficient controls on the gathering system itself. So you're, you're able to put in data that shouldn't be allowed. There should be bounds on that data input, for instance. Uh, and so we, we basically go back, we find the business process that created those particular uh, erroneous records, and then we can identify <coughs> what actually went wrong. And that allows the data gatherers to go and fix the system. And so ultimately you end up with a system that collects cleaner and cleaner data over time and you have less worry about the actual data quality itself. And that in itself is actually a pretty unique thing. In terms of process analysis, um, it really came out of this idea originally of closing the loop on data quality. But uh, basically we use a lot of graph mining techniques and I'm, I'm not a data scientist so I'm not even going to pretend to um, be able to dig into all the details. Uh, the, t the two doctors that developed this are the experts in that area. Um, but what it allows us to do is, is discovery of the process models. It allows us to identify unusual activities and that kind of heads off into the fraud detection area. 
Um, and it allows you to really see how those processes are being executed. So you can optimize your processes. You can predict from them and figure out where things may be going to go wrong, particularly, say, in the, in the life cycle of a student, and, uh, and actually get involved with those ahead of time. So this is some visualization that we actually have developed really around business process analysis. But again, the application to the student sphere is pretty direct. Um, and so what we've done here is we said, OK, and I kind of just I didn't have much time. I had about 30 minutes to do this this morning. So forgive my slightly uh, not very great slides. But let's say, for instance, we're looking at um, events that happen during a student doing a subject. So these might represent assignments. They might represent attending tutorials. They could really represent anything. And so what we're able to do with our visualization technology is look at what the outcomes are. So say, for instance, you might have withdrew or a high distinction or a distinction as an outcome. And then look at how they fall according to the pattern of particular students. So uh, the numbers here just represent, represent, say, the number of students during the unit. So if we start with 100, some go this path and end up with a certain result. Some go this path of events and end up with different results. So we can take a look just graphically and go, oh, that's kind of interesting. Maybe we want to drill down in a particular area of that. So. Um, and also, we might want to know what the, the time distribution was. Did they execute this all very close together, or did it? You know, was there a lot of variation between different students? So we can actually do that as well. We can look at the time distribution of the event. We might want to say, okay, let's look at a different subject. Let's look at there might be different streams, um, and so different streams of that subject might be taught on different campuses, for instance. We might want to look at how those events occur, and we might be interested in knowing who withdrew, for instance. So this will actually show you that, in this case, it was only the people in this path who actually withdrew. And then we can drill down a little further and say, OK, um, within that particular campus, say, let's drill down. I kind of went all the way down here and say, OK, it's that particular tutorial group. You go, four out of five actually withdrew in that group. Why is that? Now we can go back and take a look at what's actually going on with that particular, um, particular group. So that's the visualization side of it. Um, the other side of it really is the predictive analytics. And um, again, there's a lot of technology kind of hiding behind this that I don't even pretend to understand the nitty gritty detail of. Um, but the, the point of it is, I guess, is, is that the predictive analytics uses a lot of different techniques, but it can be very helpful in churn prediction. And we're actually doing a project right now at one of the major ISPs in the country. Um, doing pr churn prediction for customers. And so the churn prediction for customers and the churn prediction for students is pretty much an identical problem. Okay? Different data points, but overall the same kind of concept. Um, and then the second uh, one that we're actually doing again at the ISP is, to, is around capture and retention. So looking at, in this case, we're looking at web data and looking at behaviours on the web and then figuring out how we can... Uh, improve the retention rate or the, or the capture rate of new customers via that. So again, these things, while they're, they're being executed right now in a different discipline, are uh, very, very applicable to the student uh, kind of area. So that's uh, just really a very brief overview of what we do. Um, a little bit more detail about the predictive analytics. Um, it's really goal-driven, meaning that um, you don't have to have hypotheses up front. You can say, OK, uh, what causes a student to fail? Okay, So that's really what you want to know. That's the goal. And then what we'll do is we'll actually look through the data and apply a whole lot of different techniques to figure out patterns of behaviour that actually can't result in that outcome. And it's, it's really about face to most, uh, most technologies that are out there today that really require that you have a hypothesis. So you might, for instance, hypothesise that if you go to a private school, you might have a better chance of finishing the course. Right? But... You know, in order to test that, you're then writing queries and have to have to know that that's the hypothesis in the beginning. And you might miss something which is kind of really left field, which is in the data, but um, you haven't thought about. And with our system, that won't happen because we're actually looking for basically clusters of patterns that relate to a particular outcome rather than trying to relate uh, an input to an outcome. So uh, that's it from me. Uh, questions? Yep. Um, thanks for that. That's really interesting, especially since it sort of spun out of, depending, uh, 
IP. Um, question about the data cleansing side of things when you, you talk about even like validation of rights. So once your algorithm picks up the anomaly, isn't there still an aspect of having to go back to the customer to say, um, we need to pick this up, is this actually legitimate? Yeah, it, it really depends on, um, I guess, how, how big an anomaly it is. So the things we look at are, first of all, things like um, so value inconsistencies. So, for instance, if you get somebody who's 6.2 metres tall, right, that's probably not right. Okay, so you can probably correct that <laughs> without having question. Um, then, there's, then there's record inconsistencies where you might find, let's say, a Holden car built in 1840 probably isn't correct either, right? Um, so there's those kind of things. And then there's duplication where in the duplication it's a lot more uh, complex because you might have two records that are very, very similar, but exactly how similar are they? And so we, we have the ability to basically give you a kind of a measure of percentage of similarity, but also let you set up business rules within that to say, you know, if these two things are different, then you shouldn't merge it at any time. Right? If these two things are the same and we're 98% confident, then you can auto-merge, or these ones should be looked at by a person. So we, we have the capability within the tool to actually customise the rules around how that merging happens or how that um, cleansing happens. Mm. Yeah. Have you had a chance to use that tool in the way that you demonstrated to us with the graphics for universities? Uh, not for universities, no. We, it was actually, it came out of work that we did um, for one of the major government departments. And so we, we developed the technology. Um, we've been running it on some, uh, some data sets, which unfortunately we can't show anybody else. <laughs> but I would love to get a hold of some student data that we could actually run that on. Yeah, that'd be great. So. Yeah, the approach, the idea you had there was, was good. Mm. good to, Thank you. I'm thinking of something like that for the students that, that we tutor in the School of Education in Open Universities. There's thousands of them with you know 20 tutorial groups, and it would be good to know how the performance of the tutors is yeah. um, in terms of oh, student retention. We should chat after. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. So if it's using a matter of clustering and that sort of ilk, are you looking at um, heat maps <coughs> as a presentation form or? Now, you're asking me technical questions now. I don't like technical questions. <laughs> you have to ask the inventors if you want nitty-gritty about the product. <laughs> but is that, was that basically those are the main visualisations? Those, yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, 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 the application is a little different depending on whether you're doing business processes. So, for instance, um, in a business process, these might actually represent... Um, different business units executing the, the process for the same outcome. Let's say you know, creating a driver's license in a system. Right? Um, they might represent different groups, and within those groups, um, this read might represent where the data is invalid for some reason. Okay? So the, the represent, these are essentially the representations, but there's a few more around. You know, if, you, if you actually hand off between different groups, for instance, during a process, there's ways of actually displaying that as well. That probably really isn't applicable in the student domain. Yeah. How many how many data sets can you integrate into the platform? So, for example, that one there by tutor group, can that be linked into student services? Yeah, it really doesn't matter. We, we'll take whatever you can give us. More more the better, actually. Um, it's it's really optimised for handling very, very large volumes of data. I mean, typically millions of records. Um, so there's no issue with that. And the, the more information we can correlate across, you know, the better our predictive capabilities are as well. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.